Okay, so this is the next concept uh, we're going to talk about, which is how to compute the energy expectation value. And I'm just going to focus on the technical aspect of computing these things, independent of the interpretation of what the energy expectation tells you. Okay, so there's a there is an experiment um, that one can do. Uh, where the ex energy expectation value is relevant for predicting the outcome of that experiment, but I don't want to focus on that today. I just want to talk about how to compute this thing. Okay, and specifically we're going to look at the case where we want to compute an energy expectation value when our wave function, the state of our quantum mechanical system, is equal to the first energy eigenfunction. So think back to the particle in the box. This is like saying when my electron uh, described by its wave function big psi is equal to the ground state. Okay, so does this first thing to ask yourself conceptually is does this electron have a precise energy? And the answer is yes, because it's in an energy eigenstate. It's in state psi one, which has energy e one. That's precise. Okay, so this is the general expression for computing the energy expectation value. It's two integrals. Uh, there's an integral in the numerator and an integral in the denominator. Uh, typically, you take the integral over all space of the wave function's complex conjugate multiplied by the Hamiltonian operator acting on the wave function. That's the numerator. Okay, the denominator is just the wave function complex conjugate multiplied by the wave function integrated over all space. So a couple of things you can think about in general, the numerator is having two pieces. There's h hat acting on psi of x. h hat is going to act to the right, and this is going to produce some new function. Okay, And then the result of that function will be multiplied by the function psi star of x. Okay, and it's the product of those two things, right? You get some new curve that you're going to integrate over all space. So the question is, what does h hat do to psi x? And then what does the result of that multiplied by psi star of x look like? What's the area of that curve? Okay, so we're in the case where psi of x is equal to little psi 1 of x, right? We're in an energy eigenfunction. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a substitution. Everywhere where we see psi, big psi of x, we're going to write little psi 1 of x. Everywhere where we see big psi star of x, we're going to write little psi 1 star of x. Okay? So I'm just going to rewrite this expectation value. Let me give myself a line. Let's go mark. Next line. I'm going to rewrite this energy expectation value like this. And remember, this thing I'm going to treat separately. H hat upon now written out psi 1 of x. Okay. And what I'm going to remember is that there's a property that I know of my energy eigenfunction. Right? That property is that H hat upon psi 1 of x is exactly equal to E1 times psi 1 of x. Okay. And that's going to turn out to be a useful property. Right? This property is a useful property because what it does is it's going to insert a number, right, a constant value into my integral. And what can I do with constant values in my integral? I can move them outside of the integral. Okay. So in place of h psi, h hat upon psi 1 of x, I'm going to use this property here to rewrite this as E1 
times psi 1 of x. Okay? And this is just a number. So it can actually be pulled outside of the integral. So let's rewrite the integral one more time. So the numerator has e1 outside the integral multiplied by the integral negative infinity to infinity psi 1 star of x multiplied by psi 1 of x dx okay, divided by the integral from negative infinity to infinity of psi 1 star of x psi 1 of x dx. So I've got e1 times this integral divided by whatever this integral is. And then the last thing that I'll remind you is that there is a second property of energy eigenfunctions which we can now use. Okay, that property, so property one I have here, they satisfy h hat psi sub n is equal to e sub n psi sub n, and they also satisfy this property. If I take the integral over all space of psi n star of x, psi n of x dx, I get 1, okay? Right, no matter what n is. So here I have n equals 1 star of x times psi n equals 1 of x dx, integrated over all space. So this integral in the numerator is equal to 1, and this integral in the denominator is equal to 1, right? So I can replace this, this integral with e1 multiplied by 1 divided by 1, right? Because this integral in the numerator is equal to 1 by the property of energy eigenfunctions. This integral in the denominator is equal to 1 by the property of energy eigenfunctions. So in the end, my energy expectation value is e sub 1. That's for the case when my wave function is equal to psi sub 1 of x, the first energy eigenfunction.